Welcome to day seven of this 10 day lead guitar challenge where we're looking at a new song and also focusing on something called triads. Now we're looking at triads on the guitar but we're also going to cover a little bit of the music theory behind what we mean by triads. <laughs> The song we're looking at today is Not 19 Forever by the Cortinas. That is played with an A major triad and then the lead and the riff is based around this. Now this is a huge lead guitar concept that is often overlooked and people don't see the benefit of it. So this is why we've chosen this song and also we're needing to get this right hand moving a little bit quicker if we're going to be doing the lead lines that are coming up over the last few days and to see you in good stead from here. So this is what we're referring to when I'm talking about an A major triad. An A major chord played on the thinnest three strings. But if we back up a little bit, all a triad is, is the three notes that make up any major or minor chord. For example, that same A major chord here consists of the notes A, C sharp and E and when we play all five strings, we also have the A, the open A string five, and the E note second fret of the D string. So even though we're playing five strings, we've got two A's, two E's, and then one C sharp. So we're only playing three different note names. And it's those same three note names that we have here. We have the A, we have E, and C sharp, and these are the thinnest three strings of a bar chord. However, when we're playing a bar chord, it's more thought of as rhythm guitar and riffs and things. And then as soon as we're playing the thinnest three strings only, which we call a triad, this is far more common for lead lines and lead riffs, kind of melodies that we can hear in the guitar parts. And that's exactly what happens here. And we just add two notes, one with the third finger, one with the little finger, so we can actually keep these first two fingers still and then press these two fingers down to create the riff. Holding down two strings with this first finger is also a really important thing to get used to for a whole world of lead guitar stuff. Um, it is the same technique as used in kind of Chuck Berry riffs like Johnny Be Good. This first finger kind of holding down two strings is really important. And we also use it for chords and things going forward. This first finger holding down two, or perhaps later three strings, but here too, is a crucial technique to get down for your lead guitar playing. And that first finger needs to be down at the fifth fret on the thinnest two strings on string one, on string two. We're gonna have the thumb again just sitting on top and we wrap that first finger around the back of the neck. Okay, so we're comfortable like in this part of your finger here. That's where we put that first finger for lead guitar stuff and uh, loads of rhythm stuff when we get to a higher level. Middle finger down at the third string fret six and we play that for a whole bar eighth strumming one and two and three and four and just strumming those thinnest three strings the lower part of my thumb is here muting the thicker three strings but really i'm just trying not to strum from string four upwards two and three and four and it's another bar after we've put the third finger down at fret seven. Technically then we can lift off the middle finger as well so give that middle finger a rest. One and two and three and four and one and two and Then the third finger goes down at the seventh fret on string two, and it's going to go between there and then lift off, down, lift off. So just focusing on this hand for one second, we have one, 
two, three, four, three, four. And it's eight strums of the first one, eight strums of the second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, eight, and then it's three with your little finger down, five off. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. In total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's that repeated for the entire song. When you start practicing this a few times, that first finger is probably going to get quite tired. So you can totally switch from having the thumb over the top to having the thumb down. And we can even use a capo. As soon as we do this for the entire song, we use a capo at fret five and just have the middle finger down and do all the same. Imagine your first finger still barring, but have that first finger down. Totally fine to do that, okay? We've got a, we're still working on all the same good stuff, but we're just re resting that finger when it needs a break. If you've had a break and you wanna put your first finger back on, then do that. It's a really cool thing, especially for this particular song, gives us the opportunity to do that. So to a slow count, around 50% tempo. Ready? In one, two, three, join in. One, two, one. Repetition. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Now let's play that same thing just a little bit closer to the BPM of the original recording. Remember to keep all your strumming arm and shoulder, forearm and wrist relaxed. Keep them loose, controlled motions, but don't hold tension in your arm, don't hold it in your shoulder, otherwise it's just harder to do things faster. We need to be relaxed to play faster. Here we go, one, two, three, four. That's everything for today. Key points to remember are that a triad are the three notes that make up any major or minor chord, and we'd usually play those on adjacent strings on the guitar, strings that are next to each other. We're improving our right hand technique by playing faster, kind of strumming eight strums throughout this song. Jam along to the original recording if you're able to, and I will see you tomorrow for the next day of this 10 day lead guitar challenge. <laughs>